September. Ah, jetzt komme ich gerade. Mit der Heizung, aber noch mit der Trillen der Nose. Ja. So, how it is? We go for a run and you. Okay. Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, another video from here in my basement uh, while we're working from home. And another video of a 2021 twin tip, which is just fine by me. Um, this is the Revolt 104 from Vocal. A lot of people have been asking for this review for a while now. Really, probably since, since people started finding out about this ski back in you know late December, early January, that time of year. Um, and, and a really cool ski, and I really like the development story behind it, too. Um, so, I guess the Revolts in general have been around for a little while, and they've kind of been on either, either end of the spectrum from this ski, so to speak. So, this would be the closest on the narrower side. This is the Revolt 95. Um, that pair actually belongs to me, although has been retired. Um, but that ski is 95 underfoot. It's got... You know, it's, it's an all-mountain ski, but it's definitely got a, a park focus um, developed with Amet Dadali. And there's skis like the Revolt 87, which is a symmetrical kind of competition focus twin tip. Um, and then you have like the Revolt 121, which is basically a massive powder ski. So that before 2021, that was the Revolt collection. So kind of obviously there's a little bit of a void in between 95 and 121. So Vocal set out to design a ski that would kind of fill that, that void, so to speak. Um, and you can actually read the story of the development on Vocal's site. I'll leave a, description, or a link to that in the description of this video because I really like that story. Vocal also has like a seven and a half minute long in total video um, where you can see a bunch of the testing and development process. Um, that's actually the footage that you're seeing right now. So thank you Vocal for sending that over. I'm not going to use all seven and a half minutes of it, um, but it's really cool footage. Um, so if you're interested about the ski, uh, and there's also a little bit more on the art too. If you're interested about the ski, I would encourage you to both read that kind of, read Vocal's description of, of the development of it, and then also watch the video. Um, but here it is, here it is in my hands, and, and we've tested it a lot. I've skied this ski quite a lot at this point. Um, number of different opportunities to ski it and a number of different snow conditions and, and different ski areas and all that sort of stuff. Um, so let's kind of start with construction and shape like we normally do before we dive into, into, into performance. Um, so it's a multi-layer wood core, which is actually something that Vocal uses in a lot of their skis. Um, you'll often see them based, you know, in, in the list of specs, you'll often see a multi-layer wood core um, and then you also get you get like a fiberglass laminate in this ski and it's all put together in a traditional sandwich construction with vertical sidewalls. Um, so realistically the construction is pretty straightforward. Um, you know I think I think how they're kind of milling that wood core and the thickness of it in, in different parts of the ski that's probably attributing more to the actual performance than any other material in this ski. So we've talked a lot about other skis with you know, crazy new wave technologies and materials. And there isn't necessarily any of that in this, um, but what we do get is a really innovative shape. Um, and that's where this ski really starts to kind of set itself apart from other 104 underfoot or, you know, that kind of range of width uh, twin tips in that category. This, this thing starts to feel a little bit different. So to start, we've got really long rocker. Um, especially in the tip. So the rocker profile starts literally right where my hand is. Um, and it's when you're looking at it, it, I mean, it's practically like right in front of the toe piece. There is camber, uh, but it's not tremendously high rise camber. And it also only, you know, it only is about as long as, as one hand to the other hand. Uh, and then the tail rocker is a little bit shorter than the tip rocker, but it's still pretty darn long. Um, so Pretty similar to the Revolt 121, uh, not quite as pronounced. Also pretty similar to the Blaze 106 that we talked about a little while ago. All these skis kind of have this not super high rising. There's not a ton of splay, 
um, but the rocker itself is quite long. And then there's also early taper too, which is pretty subtle in the tip. You know, I think, uh, I think this tip shape is, is starting to become pretty darn popular where you kind of get a straightened out section of the tip through that portion. There's way more taper in the tail actually, um, which I think is cool and, and definitely, definitely adds to the overall performance of this ski. Um, and then they also have 3D radius in these skis too. So this 180, um, I believe, they actually don't list it on the ski, but they do in the catalog. I think this is 20.3 meters. Um, and I assume Focal's being a little bit more secretive about these radii than with their other skis like the Blaze or, you know, the Mantra 102 or the Kendo 88. I assume that 20 meter radius is underfoot and it definitely lengthens as you get to the tip and tail. So that's the shape. Um, it's pretty darn cool. And we can talk about performance now. I wanna start with this because I think it's the most important thing to take away about this ski. Um, because it's shaped like this and because of the flex profile, I would describe it as a relatively medium flex, a little stiffer in the tip than the tail stiffest underfoot but it's still not like outrageously stiff because of that flex pattern and the shape of this ski you can ski it however you want to i mean it's really a ski that you can take and match it to your own personality and the way that you like to ski um, so you know freestyle guys like myself or or like the people that were developing this you know i, I reached out to tanner rainville who i know fairly well um, and asked him about about his his experience on this ski people like that will find that it's just such a fun playful tool um, you know I would have l zero problem using this as my park ski um, normally I don't ski something quite this wide as a park ski but because of that rocker profile and because of the taper it's not catchy at all ever um, and it's also relatively light swing weight. So these are demo bindings. Demo bindings are kind of heavy, but you can tell the tips and tails of the ski are, are relatively light. So it's, it's pretty easy to get it to do whatever I would want it to. So, you know, like nose butter, 360s, stuff like that. Um, it would be fine, like switch takeoffs in the park. You have so much tip rocker that they're not gonna feel catchy doing that. And you can really, you can ski these things in a very, very playful way. I mean, the, like the, the videos that Vocal put out of it, like there's so many little tail butters and nose butters and, and people doing like cork seven tails in the back country and stuff like that. Um, and that's, you know, that's how somebody like myself would want to ski this ski. And I think it's such a cool ski for something like that. Um, and then, you know, that type of skier would enjoy this. And then lots of other people would too, that, that 3D radius, and we've talked about this before, it's so cool because the ski almost has like two different personalities depending on how you want to ski it. Uh, you can skid and smear and, and like side slip your turns. Like, I think we talked about this when we talked about the blaze, but, or the, the gosh, blade, blade blaze. <laughs> um, remember when Shane McConkey side slipped that spine and we were all like, that's insane. This is a ski that can do something like that. Or, you know, it's a ski that, if you're going real fast through deep snow and you want to just throw your skis completely sideways and kick up a giant cloud of snow, they'll do that really, really well. Um, but then with the shorter radius underfoot and with that little bit of camber, you know, there's not much camber, but there's enough, you can get nice round responsive turns out of them and they're more stable than you'd probably expect. You know, they're not super stiff, like I said, but they actually, they hold up to fairly aggressive skiing. No. And if you get a high edge angle on them, you can get the ski to flex and really get it to, you know, kind of flex into shorter turns. And you're utilizing both the natural flex of the ski and kind of that shorter turn radius right underfoot. Um, and then I think the other, the other thing that is important to, to bring up about this ski is because it's shaped like this, both with the, the really tapered tail and with the abundant rocker, this thing is a blast in the trees and it's like outrageously maneuverable. You know, there are skis out there that are lighter, there are skis out there with more rocker, but this just has a really smooth, predictable feel 
um, which I think has a lot to do with this tail shape. Um, it really lets you pivot the ski and, and release your tail edge really easily. And then this tail shape also helps in deeper snow, um, which is just, you know, I don't know if we talk about this concept very much, but when you have a tail shape like that, it's actually allowing the ski to sink a little bit more in the tail of the ski. So that's in turn keeping the tip above the snow more than it normally would. So you get kind of boosted float in this ski compared to, compared to, I guess, a more traditionally shaped ski that was the same width underfoot. Another thing that's important to note on these skis is the mount point is actually only about two centimeters back from true center, uh, which kind of makes sense considering the, the athletes that this was developed with. A lot of those skiers are used to skiing something centered. It certainly makes sense for somebody like me. You know, I wouldn't want to move that mount point at all. I do think there will be a certain segment of skiers that want to move it back a little bit. But what's going to be somewhat interesting on this ski is you're not going to want to go back to what would be a more traditional mount point because you're going you're gonna to kind of move yourself around too much in the center of the camber as I would describe it. Um, so something to consider and something to keep in mind is that it does have a more centered mount point which is a little different than some of the other kind of around 104 underfoot twin tips that we've looked at. Um, so that's it, that's the Revolt 104. I think it's just a fantastic ski. I think it's so much fun to ski. Like I have a blast skiing it personally. I can't help but think a little bit that skiers like myself who kind of grew up looking at the train park and I guess for me I grew up watching mogul skiers thinking that was really cool and then that kind of transitioned into park skiing and now in my mid-30s there's there's more and more skis like this for me to choose from and it's just it's just really exciting for me as a skier and I hope there's a lot of other skiers out there that feel the same way um, you know I think there's a tremendous different amount of applications for this ski um, you know, it, it's not going to be like a charging free ride ski. That's not its purpose. So if that's, if, if you have that in your mind, that's really not the idea of it. And you'd be better off on like a mantra 102. Um, but it's going to be really fun, maneuverable, soft snow ski for a lot of people, even if you're not skiing in the park or you're not going to ski at switch or backwards at all. And then for somebody like me, you know, I would mount it right here with, you know, like a, a jester or, or a pivot 18 and, and it would be just kind of like a everyday daily driver ski. Um, going back to, to Tanner Rainville when I, when I chatted with him, um, he basically said if, if, he, if he lived back on the East Coast or if he skied on the East Coast, if you didn't know, Tanner grew up in Stowe, um, but if he lived back here on the East, um, he pretty much said he would be skiing these every single day. Um, and in comparison, Tanner often is skiing the Revolt 121 because he uh, fortunately has a lot of opportunities to ski soft snow considering his position as a professional skier. Um, so we're not all as lucky as Tanner Rainville. So whether you live here on the east or whether you're out west and, and maybe you just don't get as much access to like pure deep snow, um, this, is, this is a fantastic choice and I really feel like it, it rounds out vocals kind of twin tip free ride range way more so than it was before um, adding in this 104 millimeter width um, so that's it i'll leave it there i'll leave my thoughts there uh, i thought it'd be fun i haven't connected with too many of my coworkers recently at least not for reviews um, so i kind of stumbled across some footage of harrison skiing these if you don't know harrison he's our shipping manager so I thought we'd call up Harrison, kind of chat with him about his, about his experience on these skis. Um, so if you want to watch more about them, you can keep watching and, and you'll see Harrison. Um, and also check out that kind of development video with the rest of the footage from Vocal. And, and that's it. I uh, hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and happy. Uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. We're going to keep doing review videos. We've got some exciting stuff to go into this Friday's Top 5 Friday video. So look out for that. Um, and yeah. Thank you, as always. Hey, Harrison. Good to see hey, you. Bud. It's been a while. I uh, see that you're hanging out in my studio over there. I'm going to miss your face, bud. <laughs> Thanks. Can't wait for you to get back here. I miss you, too. I also miss that studio space. It's, uh, it's easier, uh, easier doing stuff from there than from home, for sure. 
Uh, Harrison, I was going through footage of the Revolt 104, um, putting this review together, and came across that day when you took some turns on it when I was skiing. I, think I was skiing the Dina Star M Pro that day. Um, but I thought we would take the opportunity to just kind of touch base and, and get in touch with you and, and just get your thoughts on the ski. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, the top sheet's gorgeous. It looks yeah. like somebody actually painted it, and it, it's it, pretty cool. It was actually painted. There you go. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Um, but, yeah, like, whenever I see a 104 under ways to really – that really gets me going so uh and then also just holding it even with the demo binding on you know it was very decently like it wasn't lightweight but it wasn't heavy sure. yeah. um the one thing right off the gate i noticed there was a good amount of rocker in the front yeah, not nice. so much in the back yep. and it was weird because there was a good amount of rocker coming up in the front but it also wasn't like flopping down the trail. Yep. Um, it ha it feels like it has a stronger flex in the front than it does the back, and probably even more underneath the foot. Yeah. Um, yeah the foot understood. felt very stable. Yep. Um, and you know, I did it when we were on that day. That was like a, that was a freezing cold day, and it was okay. bulletproof that day. Yeah. And they still, you could you could cut trenches. Like it was really good on the groomers. And then, you know, I did it a couple of days on some warm days, uh, early March, late February, maybe. Um, and yeah, they held really strong. Uh, I think that that stiffer flex in the front, but with the rocker allows you to rip through pretty much everything. And I mean, I really, I really dug the ski. And uh, I, I can say the tip, it's way stronger than the tail, but the tail's not like noodly. It's it's got a good flex to it, so you can get a good pop without really, you know, having to give too much into it. Um, I'm 175, and so I felt I felt great on it, and it was at that 180 length. So yeah, I'm like six seven. One, no, I'm just kidding. I'm six foot. Uh, so. But it felt it felt really good, and I could slash it with that decent early rise. Um, I could slash it whenever I wanted to at high speeds, which I love doing. Um, but also, I, I felt stable just pointing it, getting in front of the boots, as Donnie says. Cool. Uh, well, I appreciate the feedback, Harrison. No worries, man. And uh, uh, you should probably put a jacket on because it looks like you're at the top of a mountain, bud. So <laughs> watch out for frostbite. Fair enough. Uh, cool. Well, Harrison, I'll let you get back to shipping people's orders. Um, Harrison's one of the few people that's still working out of the warehouse. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, Much love. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Have a great one, bud.